Hey guys, so today I thought I would just kind of do a bit of a reading check-in, cover how I read books slash like how many I have on the go at one time and that kind of thing. Talk about all the books I got on the go, which is quite a few. And then I also wanted to talk about video ideas. I feel like I always have a million video ideas, more ideas than I have time. When it was Vlogmas and I was doing a video a day, I scrapped like 10 to 15 video ideas because I had tons and there just wasn't enough time. And I could probably film a video every day for a very long time without running out of ideas, but I don't always want to film the ones, I don't know, some days I just don't feel like filming certain ones. I was going to do a update to my TBR cart today, but I wasn't really feeling it. So we'll do that some other time. I haven't been using this much lately. Um, but I want to more in the future, so maybe that will be the next video, maybe that will be coming soon. But I would love to hear what kind of videos you guys like to see from me. I get the most, I love these kind of videos when I do vlogs, but they're also the least watched videos of mine, so the people that love them seem to really love them, but there's not a ton of people that really love them. And they're also harder to film in many ways. They're more fulfilling creatively, but it's a lot harder to check in often. So. Let me know what kind of videos you like to see. Even though I have ideas, I'm feeling uninspired at the same time. So today I thought I would just check in with all the books that I'm currently reading and uh, talk about how many I'm usually reading at a time. I'm not even sure if I grabbed all of them, honestly. So the one thing that I'm usually reading but not well is an ebook. So I got my phone here. I just use the Kindle app. I don't have a Kindle anymore. I have a tablet and I have my phone and then I mostly just read books from NetGalley on the Kindle app. I get them sent even though I could read it via the NetGalley app as well. Um, I really want to be an ebook reader, you guys. I had a Kindle for years, barely ever used it. Kindle does not connect to our library here in Canada, so I should just use my tablet. I could use Kindle. I could use the library. I don't know. I just never pick up books when they're ebooks. But I always do try to have one ebook kind of on the go because I want to have access to NetGalley and get early access to some books and because I can always have it with me. So especially I find Sunday mornings, we go early to church, we help set up, and then often I'm kind of alone while other people are doing their setup stuff. So then that's when I pick up my ebook. So the current ebook that I have right now is called, what is it called? I think it's called Mothering by the Book and it is by Jennifer Papito and I love Jennifer. So she is in the homeschool world. This book is all about, I, like, I'm i barely started. I think I'm like 2% in. The book is all about read alouds and using that in your homeschool. Like I said, I'm not very far, but I love Jennifer. I have worked with her on a number of different projects in the homeschool world. I've talked to her um, a bunch and I just, I love her and a lot of her philosophies. She's a Charlotte Mason homeschooler, which means a lot of books. And while we don't follow the Charlotte Mason method, I am fascinated by it and I love a lot about it. So I am barely started that book, but I'm enjoying it. And the foreword was written by Sally Clarkson, who is a homeschooling parenting book um, author, favorite author of mine. Uh, so that's exciting. So I always have an ebook on the go. And whether or not, like, often the ebooks take me a long time because I don't pick them up very often. Then I always have an audiobook on the go, and the current audiobook I'm listening to is The Lost Fairy Tales, Tilly, and The Lost, just, just The Lost, okay. These titles are so confusing to me because they're different. Mine is just called The Lost Fairy Tales, but on Goodreads and everywhere else, it's Tilly and The Lost Fairy Tales. But anyway, um, this is the second book in the Pages and Go and Co series. I'm not very far into the audiobook, um, like chapter two, I don't know. Not very far and I'm kind of struggling with it a bit because I don't remember what happened in book one. I read that like two, two years ago maybe and it's, there's not really, there hasn't been much of a recap yet. So yeah, this one was the one that was chosen for my uh, middle grade interactive TBR. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing more middle grade interactive TBRs for the month. I think I'm probably done because normally I do the first half of the month for middle grade March focusing on middle grade and the second half is focusing on mystery and I haven't read any mystery yet other than for the weekend with Agatha 
last weekend. So yeah, this is probably like my last official middle grade um, interactive TBR book that you guys can choose for me. Then this one, I think on Goodreads, I DNF'd it, but I haven't like officially DNF'd it. Uh, my Diary from the Edge of the World. So people sometimes ask me why I don't have my Goodreads linked and it's because I'm not that great at keeping it up. I am trying this year, but I also change my ratings sometimes. Like I, if I go on Goodreads, I try to rate it right after, but after it sits with me a little bit, it changes. If you watch, if you follow me on Goodreads and watch my monthly wrap-ups, you might notice a bit of a discrepancy on how I rate books. And sometimes I'll give like a three and a half stars, a book that I consider three and a half stars, three stars on Goodreads, and sometimes I'll give it a four star. <sighs> yeah. So I like to keep track of the books that I've read, but uh, I'm not very good at using that. Anyway, My Diary from the Edge of the World is a middle grade story that is actually very interesting. I'm 154 pages in, but it's a like over 400 page middle grade book. And I just feel like I've kind of used all my middle grade energy, reading energy for the month. So it's about a girl who, they live in a world that is like our world, but it's not typical. Sasquatches helped win the American Civil War. Dragons glide over Route 1 on their way south for the winter. And mermaids hunt along the beaches and where dark clouds come for people when they die. But then a dark cloud comes looking for her younger brother and her family picks up their family and tries to get away from this dark cloud. And um, this is set in a world where the world is flat and it's kind of interesting because they take quotes like quotes from Ferdinand Magellan where he is talking about how the world is round and they have twisted it and made it so that the world is flat for this and um, it, it can be really good except if kids don't know the actual quote it can be maybe make them think that the world is flat? I'm not sure. Hopefully not. Uh, I think though, I think our round world is kind of like a another, like an alternate universe maybe? I'm not really sure yet. But it's really good. It's a feels like a mix between, um, what's that one called? The one with the ghosts. And it's also a Lockwood. Her name is Gracie Lockwood. Lockwood and Co. That series, The Screaming Staircase. It feels like kind of a mix between that and a few other books. Like, I am enjoying it. I just feel like I might be running out of steam. So those are my middle grade books, except I'm also reading The Secret Garden. So I am usually also, in addition to um, an audiobook, an ebook, I'm usually reading some kind of classic. I'm actually reading two of them right now. Uh, that does happen as well. So I am not very far into The Secret Garden. Uh, but I'm enjoying my third, fourth time through. I don't know how many times I've read this, but I'm enjoying it. I love this edition. I'm using my beautiful bookmark from my um, one of my pen pals. So I'm on chapter five, and this is A Cry in the Corridor. So I'm loving this edition. I'm loving the illustrations. Really good read through. Uh, the other classic that I'm currently reading is Anne of Ingleside. I started this, I think, in January, and I only read to like page 30 or so and then I picked it up on two days ago. Yeah, I picked it up two days ago and I've read like 200 pages since then. So I'm getting more into it. This is book six in the Anne series and Anne is married to Gilbert. They have, I'm kind of confused on how many kids they have, possibly five. We're definitely focusing on some more than others. Six? Do they have six kids? Jem. Um, Diana and Nan are the twins. Walter. And they're Shirley. We never hear from Shirley. Okay, so maybe five kids. Um, so I like quite a bit about it, but I wish we would see more of Anne and Gilbert's relationship. Gil is a doctor, and so he's always off working. He's overworking himself. And I feel like he's not really a character. And I don't know, I was rooting for Anne and Gilbert in those first few books. So now it feels weird that he's there, but he's not really there. So I am enjoying it a lot, but I wish more things were included. Uh, yeah, so that's my other classic. And then I'm always reading some nonfiction. And right now my nonfiction is Gentle and Lowly. This book is by Dane Ortland and has gotten a lot of hype. What year was this published? Maybe last year. Like I've heard a lot about it, 2020 in the last year. And honestly, 
I'm not really enjoying it. Um, not that the information is bad. It's just so very dry. So he's taking the verse um, in Matthew 11 verse 29 where Jesus says he is gentle and lowly in heart and he is pulverizing it. Like it's just, he's talking about it so much, which he often talks in here about how he likes reading the Puritan writers and how this, this is how they do it. They take one verse and they write pages and pages and pages and pages on it. And that's what he's doing. And so he's often quoting Puritans and just writing like one himself. And I have found that I like deep books, but I often like them to have a little bit of humor, a little bit of something. It's not even that this book doesn't have humor as much as it just feels like very dry in the way that he's saying the words but they don't seem to really mean anything to him so thankfully it has short chapters so pretty much anytime i want to pick up another book i'm forcing myself to read another chapter my next one here is chapter eight and they're like yeah eight pages a chapter so i'm trying to get a couple done a day i would love to get this done by the end of the month and kind of check that off my list not that i wouldn't recommend this some people i know lots of people love it it's just the writing is not for me. I gotta say that. And then usually I have short stories on the go. I don't know how to share about short stories. So one that I'm currently in the middle is uh, in the middle of is Miss Marple, the complete short stories. So I started this on my weekend with Agatha and I read five short stories. I haven't read any more since. This might just sit on my shelf for a while. I have a few short story collections that I've started that are on my shelf. And you just read a little bit here and there. I love short story collections, but I don't love that I can't check the book off. Like I like to, uh, I also like the feeling of accomplishment of finishing a book. And I feel like with short stories, you kind of want to do it slowly over time. So yeah, I haven't read any more of these, but I am really enjoying them. Uh, the first, I think the first six are the first six short stories she ever wrote about Miss Marple. That was kind of supposed to be where Miss Marple started and stopped. But people loved her and Agatha Christie loved writing about her so she made more and yeah so this is kind of like pick it up when I want to okay and then I've got one more like genre that I'm usually in the middle of and that is poetry so right now I am reading the poetry of William Wordsworth I don't know if this is a complete collection I have no idea how many poems he wrote it doesn't say it's complete so I'm gonna go ahead and guess it's not um, I have a very specific I love poetry, but I have very specific things that I like. And the poetry of William Wordsworth is probably not going to fit to that category. This, his poems are way too long, first of all. This one, it's called An Evening Walk. And first of all, it takes up like the entire page. Like, I like short lines for the most part. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 pages long for one poem. And not that maybe there's not like some good stuff in there. I kind of just, I skipped that one for the most part. I read a little bit and then I skipped the rest. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't like my poetry like that. So I'm reading some of them. I'm not very far. I'm only 50 pages in. And a few things I've liked, but for the most part, I don't think he's a poet for me. Okay, and then this next poetry book is going to be the next time I do a book haul because I just got it. This is Friends, a poem for every day of the year. This is edited by Jane McMorland Hunter and I got this off a of book outlet. I'd never heard of it before but I was like well it's a poem for every day of the year so you got a lot of diversity. thought I would give it a try and I'm really enjoying it. I started reading it like March 15th or whenever and then I'm reading it kind of in order but then I'm also going back to January and reading some and I've already um, tagged a few that I like either for myself or with the kids there's there's some good variety here some of them are funny some of them are serious we've got a, a host of different poets in here we've got Emily Dickinson who's one of my favorites uh, lots of people I've never heard of but we've got W.B. Yeats William Wordsworth look at that Robert Herrick uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Lancelot Andrews, Oliver Wendell Holmes, Nolis, oh man, I can't read, Nicholas Grimwald, John Clare, Alfred Lord Tennyson, 
Edward Lear, Charles Lamb, Thomas Hardy, William Shakespeare. So quite a few are repeated, Some like so many that I've never heard of, so many of my favorites. Percy Shelley, yeah, so lots of variety in here. And I'm thinking that the poem for every day of the year is kind of like my way to do it. So I'm going to be working on this for a while. I am put a um, mark in where I started and I'll enjoy this. So those are all the books that I'm currently in the middle of and like the types of books that I usually have on the go. Sometimes more than one per genre. Like poetry I have two, sometimes nonfiction I'll have two, sometimes I'll have uh, two classics, two... I don't have like one thing I'm not really reading right now is a fiction book that's not middle grade, like a physical fiction book that's not middle grade or not a classic, um, because I'm trying to get these middle grade books done and some classics done, and I usually have quite a few books on the go at the same time, and I like that because I can pick up different books for different moods, but I also like reading just one so I can check it off as well. So I would love to hear, like, how many books do you have on the go at one time normally? And this doesn't include some books that I've started that I haven't picked up for a while. Like these are just books that I've been reading in the last two weeks. There's also some that it's been a little bit more than two weeks since I picked up, but I'm still kind of in the middle of. So yeah. Am I weird to read this many? I kind of would like to challenge myself like one month just to read one book at a time. That might be interesting or it might make me go completely crazy. I'm not sure. Yeah. And then if you guys have some ideas for future videos, or something you'd like to see spice this up a little bit let me know in the comments thanks so much for being here you guys